Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be covering the second part of our over overview of hardware. This is part of the CompTIA A Plus uh, computer training. Uh, I want to point out to the, the bottom here, there's a website, computerrepairtrainingplus.com. Uh, there's some additional resources there that you might find helpful. We'll have some labs there and also some quizzes. Uh, hardware 1.1. A little bit about me again. Uh, I've been teaching about 12 years this A plus course, uh, certified CompTIA A plus, Network Plus, also certified Cisco, CCNA, CCNA, and also certified as a Cisco instructor. Have a couple of degrees: the AA, the BA, and a master's in educational technology. Uh, got the master's because I enjoy teaching. Let's get started. Objectives. We're going to understand that CPU is the, the device that processes all the data in the computer. And we have two uh, devices, they're chips, part of what we call the chipset, the north and the south bridge. They control the data flow to the components on the motherboard. So the CPU processes the data and the chipsets control the data flow. We're going to understand uh, what the primary and secondary memory is and how it is used in the computer. So these are some important concepts that we're going to hope uh, that you're going to learn as we go through this. Uh, the main board. Now the main board is our motherboard. It's also called a system board. Uh, it, it holds the CPU, the memory, and the video card, and a few other chips. And we'll be discussing those. All devices on the motherboard and, uh, and actually external devices also that are connected to the computer all have to communicate with the CPU. CPU is the controller for everything. Peripherals link uh, via ports to the case, and this can be through cable or it could be wireless. Uh, here's an example of a motherboard. Uh, on the top here, we've got some uh, uh, DDR3 slots. These are DIMM slots for memory. Uh, there's a LGA1366 uh, socket. This is a fairly newer motherboard. It has also the X58 uh, chipset, which is your uh, north. Uh, it's not the north. Well, it's the north bridge, but it's not the memory controller anymore because this would be an, uh, the new core i7. The memory controller now is on the CPU, which really speeds things up. All hardware components, uh, either on or off the motherboard, all have to communicate with the CPU. So everything that you see here will communicate with the CPU, and also anything connected to it as a peripheral. Uh, some of the ports uh, that we have on our computer. Here we start off with some external uh, SATA for uh, external hard drives, uh, 3 gigabits per second. That's been moved up to 6 gigabits per second. Have quite a few uh, USB 2 ports here. Uh, USB is now at 3.0, which is considerably faster. Might have a FireWire port, uh, also gigabit LAN connection. Uh, your audio also might have an optical audio port. This is the uh, motherboard ports that are common uh, I.O. devices that you'll find. CPU and chipsets. Now, the CPU performs the data processing. All the processes, the instruction, the software are all processed through the CPU. The chipsets, these are uh, small microchips on the motherboard. They control the data flow. Chipsets and the CPU are pretty important to understand and what they're connected to because your performance of your computer is based on your CPU, your chipsets, your memory, and your video card. We're going to discuss that more. Uh, manufacturers of the CPU and chipsets. We have Intel, which is the major corporation for manufacturing of all CPUs. They have about 80% of the market. Uh, AMD probably has about 10%, and the rest uh, rest comprise of maybe 5 to 10%. We have AMD, VIA, SIS, and Citrix. Uh, here's an example of a gigabit, gigabyte motherboard. Uh, we have the Intel uh, 45 Express chipset again. This would be your North Bridge. Your South Bridge would be down here. This would be your I.O. controller. Now the North Bridge is going to control your memory. So your memory slots are here right next to it. Also you have a PCI Express slot here for your video card. So your, your CPU, your video card and your memory are all going to be uh, control the data flow is all going to be controlled by this north bridge the south bridge down here is going to control everything else your, all your PCI slots uh, all your hard drive or your uh, S SATA slots any other USB slots or anything else connected to this motherboard will be controlled the data flow will be controlled by this controller here the IO uh, motherboards uh, uses two chips in its chipset that north bridge and the south bridge 
Now here's a little diagram that I'm going to ask you to draw because I really want you to understand it. We have a, the CPU sitting on the top. We have the north bridge which is controlling all the data flow to the CPU. And primarily we're going to be uh, moving RAM information uh, back and forth from the CPU. The RAM is going to be our primary uh, memory storage for the CPU, holding instructions, holding data. And we're going to be moving data back and forth between these devices. Also video. If we're running games or any kind of a, a high definition or high resolution graphics, we need a, a strong or fast video card because we don't want any bottlenecks. Anything that's going to be slowing this computer down will become a bottleneck. So we need a fast video card and fast RAM. Now all our other devices are going to be connected through our south bridge, such as your keyboard, uh, your mouse, your hard drive, uh, all the other components that are considerably slower will be connected to your south bridge. But they're not going to normally be a bottleneck uh, to your computer because your computer performance is based on your CPU, your RAM, and your video card. Primary storage, which is also considered temporary storage. This is your RAM and it's used uh, primarily by the processor. The processor will be moving uh, information, data, instructions in and out of the RAM very, very quickly. Secondary storage. This is what we call permanent storage. This would be your hard drive, your CD, floppy drive, external drives, anything that can, can store data on a permanent basis. Here's an example of a uh, DIMM chip. This is RAM memory. It's a temporary place to hold instructions and data while the CPU processes. You see there's a little slot here. The DIMMs, we have uh, primarily DIMM2 and DIMM3 today, or DDR2 and DDR3. And this little slot is in a position so that when you plug this RAM into the slot of the motherboard, you won't be able to uh, put it in unless the slot lines up. Primary storage, RAM. Random access memory temporary storage on the motherboard. When the power goes down on the computer, this memory goes away. Types of RAM. Uh, memory modules. We've got the DIMMs and we still have uh, RAM bus which is providing uh, another type of memory, inline memory module. I uh, don't see it as often. The DIMMs are pretty much taking over the market now. RAM is volatile. Uh, that term volatile meaning it doesn't persist or it can go away when the power is removed data does not persist. The ROM, the read-only memory. This is read-only memory and it is non-volatile. When the computer first starts up, it needs some instructions in order to start. We have read-only memory, a BIOS chip, that holds the startup instructions. We need that. Here's an example of some uh, uh, dim, dim slots on the motherboard. This would be a two-channel uh, memory. We could put uh, DIMMs in either of these, or all four of them could be populated. Uh, dual channel is much faster than single channel, and uh, it helps to uh, helps increase the performance of the computer considerably. Secondary storage, hard drives. Disks that rotate at high speeds. This is a pretty antiquated technology for today's uh, digital computer. There are uh, devices now, hard drives that are totally digital, uh, that pretty much have what's called RAM or flash uh, memory in them. So they are completely digital, no moving parts, and much faster. And uh, the reliability is much higher. Uh, when you're rotating disks inside of an enclosed space at high speeds, they heat up, they wear out, the bearings start to degrade, and your disks today uh, probably last five years at the max. I've seen disks uh, die within a few weeks after being purchased. Uh, integrated drive electronics, the IDE. This is an older technology that was uh, used primarily with the hard drives. It's been replaced. Uh, this ATA, AT is the attachment standard, specifies the motherboard hard drive interface. Now the types of the ATA, you have the serial, which is, which is the newer type, and it's pretty much replaced the parallel. Uh, much faster, uh, much faster than the parallel. The SATA, only one device per port, where the, where the parallel, you could actually have two devices uh, per port. But again, the SATA, the speeds have increased considerably over the parallel. Uh, here's, a, here's a drive that has its case removed. You can, you, if you notice here, there's quite a few platters. One, two, three, four, five, looks like six platters. Today, most drives might have either one or two platters. This would be an older hard drive. 
Here's the inside of a computer. Now this big flat ribbon cable is your 40 pin IDE cable. You don't see that as much anymore, but you can see it has two connectors. One is usually connected to the hard drive, another maybe to a CD-ROM. And then it has a connector on your motherboard. You see these little orange connectors here. These are the new uh, serial uh, ATA connectors. And these are primarily being used today because they uh, much faster throughput. You also have some DIMM chips uh, down here, DDR2 memory. This is the two-channel memory again. Here is uh, uh, your uh, north bridge and uh, looks like your video card here. Secondary storage. Uh, serial ATA is today's standards. allows for more than four drives in a system. So you can plug in quite a few drives now with these uh, serial uh, connection. The ID devices, the hard drives and CD-ROM drives, uh, these only allowed uh, either the hard drive and a CD-ROM. It was only two devices per port. Generally only had one port on the, on the motherboard. You could add a second port, but you'd have to do it normally with uh, an add-on card that you would plug into a PCI slot. Now, CD, D, uh, DVD, uh, read-write, this is pretty much standard equipment for today, uh, both for reading the software distributions and for burning media. Uh, here's a old connection. This is a 34-pin floppy drive connection. You might find these on some of the uh, motherboards. Probably won't find it on the newer motherboards today because floppies pretty much aren't used. They only had 1.44 uh, megabytes of storage, so it was very limited. They were also fragile, and they had a tendency to go bad quickly. Uh, in review, uh, motherboard, uh, CPU, chipsets, and memory. Those are the primary components on the motherboard, along with the video card that, uh, again, comprise of the uh, primary performance of the computer. Now the north bridge. The north bridge is also called the memory controller. Now the memory controller has been moved on to the CPU with the new uh, iCore 7, but uh, a lot of the older chips still have a memory controller, and the memory controller was controlling the RAM to the to the CPU. Now the south bridge, uh, I/O controller. All your other devices that are connecting uh, to the motherboard go through the serial bus. Your PCI slots, your hard drive, your your uh, mouse, your keyboard, your CD-ROM, all connect through the uh, south bridge. Primary storage again, RAM, it is volatile, meaning it goes away when you uh, turn the power off, not persistent. Secondary storage, that would be permanent, and that would be your hard drive or possibly a CD-ROM or flash drive. Uh, activities, I want you to draw the CPU RAM video with the north and the south bridge. I want to show you, I want you to uh, demonstrate how uh, those are connected and the data flow. Uh, there's a lab uh, 1.3 I'd like you to do. This is going to be identifying the major co components or parts on the uh, motherboard. I want you to answer all those questions. Also, there's going to be an evaluation. We're going to have quiz uh, 1.2 that you will find. Uh, you can take that at the computerrepairtrainingplus.com. Uh, You'll find it on that, uh, on that website. Well, that's it for now. Thank you very much for your time.